So in today's video, we're going to be talking about Microsoft Teams webinars, because I'm sure you've been there where one of your users or you've asked yourself, is there any way to create a Teams meeting and put a registration form in front of it and then track who's registered and who's attended? Well, now you can with Microsoft Teams webinars. So let's dive in and take a look. Okay, so we're now here in Microsoft Teams. Let's go ahead and get our webinar set up. So we're in the calendar view and to do this, it's nice and easy. All we've got to do on the top right hand side under new meetings is drop the arrow down and then select webinar. Now from here, there's a few things that we need to do. First of all, we can set up all the presenter information, who's going to be presenting, what are we presenting about? And then we're going to go ahead and looking at creating a custom registration form for our webinar. So firstly, let's go ahead and give this a title. And here we have is we've got Harper presenting all about her life. So Harper is my dog. So let's go ahead now and add Harper as a presenter. And then you could add more people here as well. So for example, maybe Megan, our uh, marketing manager wants to say a few words. So let's add her as well. Then what we can do is select a date for this. So I'm going to do this tomorrow and we're going to do this at 8.30 p.m. But what you might want to do as assuming that the webinar starts at 8.30 p.m. is you might want to invite all the presenters at 8.15, give them a few minutes to get set up, work for any technical issues they may have, and all that kind of jazz. And at the bottom, you can just add some more information about the webinar as well. So at this point, what we now want to do is just go ahead and create that registration form. But before we go there, I just want to let you know, you can change the time zone. And you can also see who can actually register for this webinar. So you could either choose whether it's people within your organization. But if you're doing a sales or marketing event where you want people outside of your org to join, you can select for everyone. And if this is grayed out, then that means your IT admin hasn't enabled it for you. So you need to go chat to them to get this enabled. So now let's go create our registration form. Let's select view registration form. And then from here, there's a few things that we can set up. So we can have all about our event details. We can add our speakers and then we can add in a form that our attendees are going to fill in to sign up. So let's go ahead and add all of our event details. And then we can go ahead and add our speakers. So you know, I could put Harper Loughton here. I am a dog. And it is worth knowing you can add multiple speakers, but you can't add any fancy graphics here. Like you can't add anyone's face or any picture about them, but you can add who they are and a quick bio there as well. Then on the right hand side, now we can add in all the form information. So first name, last name and email. That's what comes by default. But then what we can do is we could do add field because most webinars you go to, the marketing team wants to know about your organization, your industry, all that kind of jazz. So you could hit organization, for example, and then you can choose whether or not this is a required field for people signing up. So we're just going to go ahead and remove that for now because the other thing you can do is add custom questions. So for example, it could be an input or multiple choice. And I've added a custom question here, which of course our marketing team are super interested in. And what do you prefer, a dog, a cat, or do you love both? So now the last thing I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna upload a image. So let's add a little bit of spice to our webinar registration. I'm gonna add some dog biscuits here. You can move it where it is, you can zoom it in, but we're just gonna go ahead and hit done. And now at this point, there's a few things you could do. You could go view this in the browser to see what it's going to look like. You could copy the registration link now that you would send to the attendees, but we're just going to go ahead and hit save. And then it's going to allow us to preview what we've done. So as you can see here on the left hand side, we've got all our event details and then our custom registration has come through as well. If you want to make any changes, you can go ahead and hit edit, but we're going to go close this out. And at this point, we now have all of our registration forms set up. We have our presenter information. So we're going to send this invite to our presenters. And no, this doesn't go to any attendees because nobody's registered yet. This just goes to everyone presenting within our webinar. So we're just going to go ahead and I'm just going to change this to a little bit later because we did say it will close at nine. And I'm going to go ahead and hit send. And now at this point, you're probably thinking, well, 
how on earth do I actually get the registration link sent to anyone that might want to sign up? So what we're going to do is just click a dog's life with Harper, click our webinar again, and I'm just going to maximize our webinar. And now what we can do is we can actually go ahead and do copy registration. So I'm going to just click that. I'm going to do the copy registration link, and then we're going to go load this up on a web page. But you know, in the real world, you're probably going to send this out via email, add a link on your social medias like LinkedIn, whatever. But we're just going to go ahead and enter this in. And now at this point, we have our registration form. So let me go ahead and fill this form in. And once we filled the form in, we're filling it in here as Alex. I'm going to go ahead and hit register now. And once we've registered, we get a good thumbs up saying see you at the event. And it also confirms that an email has been sent to our email address. So let's just go ahead and go to Alex's emails. And then from here, we can see that we've got a new email from Microsoft Teams. So this is letting us know that we've registered. Our seat has been reserved. I could join the event from here or cancel my registration. But what you can also do, which is really nice, is because we've got the calendar attachment here, is I could go ahead and add this to the calendar. So whether you're in Outlook like I am right now, or Gmail, or whatever email client that you use, you could easily add the invite to your calendar. So this is great. So at this point, we have registered for it. We've got all our presenters ready to go. but what we're going to do now is we're going to go back to Teams because at this point you might want to know who's already registered before the event. So what you can do is we're in the actual webinar here is I'm going to download here this registration option. And what this is going to do then into your C downloads or your Explorer downloads is it's going to download an Excel file. So I'm going to go to my downloads. And then from here, we can see we have this new Excel file. So if I load this up, what's really interesting now is that I could see that Alex is registered. I could see the email address, but then I can also see my custom question saying that they love both. So we know now that Alex loves dogs and cats. Okay, so now at this point to recap, we've gone ahead and created our webinar. We've created our registration page. We've registered somebody to it. Now let's go ahead and actually join this webinar and get this thing started. So I'm going to go ahead as the organizer and just hit join. And what you're going to see is this has a very similar look and feel to a normal meeting. So you know, I could go ahead and add my computer audio. I could add just my webcam, for example. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, and then I'm going to just add some computer audio here and then do join now. So now I'm in the meeting as an organizer. Maybe I had other presenters in here as well, just getting ready. Let's go ahead and look at this as if we were Alex joining in in this webinar. So now we're in Alex's emails. Let's go ahead and join the event. And I'm just going to load this up here in the web browser. And we're just going to go ahead and join this meeting. So because of my meeting settings here for the webinar, it's not actually allowed Alex just to go straight in. He is right now sitting in the lobby. So let's just go back to Teams. And what we can see here is that Alex is quietly waiting in the lobby. So I could just go view the lobby right now. And if people had already joined or if I had lots of people in here, for example, I could admit multiple people at once. But I'm just going to go ahead and just admit Alex by himself. So now at this point, we have a very familiar feeling. We have Alex joined here. There are a few things that we can do though. And because this is a webinar, you may wanna choose whether or not our attendees have the ability to use their microphone or has the ability to use their webcam. And we could have done this prior to the meeting with meeting options, but we could also do more actions and look at our meeting options as well. And then from the right hand side, we could see that I could by default before the meeting or during the meeting, choose whether or not I allow microphones or webcams. But let's just say I don't allow it, but Alex has a question, for example. So I could, as an organizer, choose Alex here and I could allow the microphone or allow the camera, or even make and promote Alex to be a presenter. So these are pretty standard things that we'd expect from here. Of course, in a webinar, I could go ahead and share as well. So 
you know, maybe I want to go ahead and share a file from my OneDrive. So I could do browse OneDrive and then select my PowerPoint from here and then do share. And then I got this really nice PowerPoint view where I can see my slides, I can see my notes, but I can also see everything that's happening within the webinar. So I could see my own video. If Alex had video, I could see that as well. But I could easily interact with the chat and any other kind of function within this webinar. And if we were looking at it from Alex's perspective, he's just going to see the presentation. He can also see that he currently can't share his video or his microphone, but he is allowed to put his hand up. And then from there, I could choose whether or not I want to unmute him and so on and so forth. So at this point, that's really how webinars works. And when you're done with the webinar, when everything is done and you've done a fantastic job at the top here, you could just leave, but we could just drop this and end the meeting and that will end the meeting for everyone. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit end. And what you can see then from Alex's perspective, it's just gone ahead and canceled that or ended that meeting for him as well. So now that the webinar is completed, we can go ahead and bring it back up again. So let's just go back into our webinar. And what's really cool is before we actually had the webinar, we could see all of the registrations, but now we can see all of the attendance. So if I go ahead and download this, and again, it's gonna go download into our Explorer, and then our downloads files. And then from our downloads, we now have our registration report, which I did prior to the webinar. But now we just downloaded the attendance report. So if we bring that up in Excel, what we can now see is all the information about what happened within our webinar. So who joined, how long were they there for, what's their email address, and what's their role. So Really interesting to be able to control the life cycle of your webinar from who's registered to who's attended. And then you can give that information to your different teams, whether it's your marketing team, sales team, or any other group, your training group, to understand who's registered and you could follow up with more information and so on and so forth. So that's all I wanted to share today. I think webinars is a fantastic feature. And of course, it's going to continue to advance as time goes on. This is just our first version deployed right now. So make sure if you've enjoyed this video, that you subscribe and we'll see you next week for another video.